Hey, hi everyone, Phil from statisticsmentor.com. What we're addressing here is the question when we're differentiating with respect to one variable, should we use the quotient or the product rule? Because where you can apply the product rule, you can apply the quotient rule. Now let's uh, review the formulas. For the products rule, we want derivative of the product of two functions. That is equal fg. That is equal to f times the derivative of g plus g times the derivative of f. And it doesn't matter which way around you've got it. So I could put this as the first term and this as the second term. The quotient rule is I've got to be a form of a function, say f divided by another function, g. And the quotient rule says what you do is it's g times derivative of f minus f times the derivative of g minus g squared. Now in this case it doesn't matter which way around you've got it, so the g here in the derivative of the same g and then you do g times derivative of f is the first is uh, the first term. All right, so let's look at two examples. Um, before I look at the two examples, it's, uh, let's just worth saying this, that depending on the function f and g, it can be easier to apply the product rule than the quotient rule. Okay, and we'll see why through two examples. First, we've got this function. It's called h is equal to the exponential x divided by x squared. And we can see that this function exists for all x on the real line except for x is 0 because you can't divide by 0. When x is 0, that would be 1 divided by 0. So this notation is saying all this reads as all x that is on the real line except for everything uh, except for zero the set and remember in that set is just zero okay so first we can see that this is a quotient rule so let's apply the quotient rule write out the building blocks first so f is ex so the derivative of f is ex g is x squared so derivative of g with respect to x is 2x. Now put that into the formula. Right, once we put that into the formula like so, you can see it could take we've got a denominator x4, which we can and there's two terms here, so we can write it like this. Then we can see that x squared can cancel with two of those. Give you x squared here. That x can cancel one of those x's to give you x to power 3 and then we can take out the common denominator x the exponential over x squared and that's the answer and this derivative exists so long as x is not equal to 0 as we stated earlier for the function exists so long as x is not equal to 0 right, so that's using the quotient rule let's repeat the process uh, using the product rule and see if it's any easier now why we can write a quotient as a product is because look this is a quotient because it's a fraction uh, this thing here x squared 1 over x squared can be ri written as x to the power of minus 2 just to recap the rule if you don't know it okay I use this result that suppose that a is, if a is bigger than 0 then x to the power of minus a is the same as saying 1 over x to the a so that's what I've done here x to the minus 2 same as 1 over x squared and that's why quotients can always be written as products and here we have a product this times this so this could be here f and this could be my g and that's why now I can apply the product rule instead then we have write down the formula for the product rule and then substitute in the f and the g and the derivatives of those to get this and then tidy it up and here you go, common factor here, ex times x to the minus 2, and there you go. And this expression is the same as the expression we've got 
I'm using caution, i.e. this. So which method would you prefer? Do you prefer the quotient rule or the product rule? Well, some people prefer the product rule because the quotient rule is a bit more messy. And so then, in this example here, we've shown you that you could get away with just using the product rule. All right, so for my second example, let's look at this function. Um, x cubed plus 1 all over x squared plus 1. So the top bit is my f, g bit is my, bottom bit is my g. We can see that this function here exists for all x, y, because even for negative numbers, you can see that since this is a squared term, you're never going to be dividing, and this is a positive term, you're never going to be dividing by 0 for any x. So this function exists for all for x, all x on the real line. So that's the derivative of x, that's the derivative of g, and then we plug that into the formula for the quotient rule. Okay, like so. So we get this. Now you might want to leave it as it is, but you can see that the first and the second term here, this is involves powers of, if you put take it through brackets, x to the power of 4 and x to the power of 2. This involves, if we take it, expand this bracket, we can see this involves also x to the power of 4 an x to the power of 3, an x to the power of 1. So you can see there's some c common denominator here between here and here being x to the power of 4. So that means that it's worth expanding the brackets. Like so. All right, so this bit is this bit, this bit is this bit. Now we'll take the, since it's a ma ne negative, negative through the brackets, remember, negative and a positive is a negative, negative and a positive is a negative. So, 3x4 is going to be minus 2x4, leaving us with x4 plus 3x squared. There's no other x squared term, so we can't uh, combine them. The minus and a plus makes a minus, so that's minus 2x, and then there you go. x squared plus 1 squared. Guess it's okay to leave it here, although you can also see in the numerator. Here they've got a common factor of x, so you could take that x out as well. So in this case you have x, x3 plus 3x minus 1 over x squared plus 1 all squared, done. And this exists for any x in the real line. As we said, you can look, you can see here, you're not never going to be dividing by zero, because that's a positive term. That's a positive term. Okay, so going back to this function, quotient fraction here, we can rewrite it as a product. Okay, for the, I showed you how to do that for the previous example. Okay, so f is x3 plus 1, so the derivative of that apply the standard rules. g is a function to the power of minus 1. You can see that this is a function of a function. It's a chain rule. So in other words, when we're applying the, trying to apply the product rule here, we're actually applying the product rule, and also we need a chain rule. So this brings the power down, minus 1. subtract 1 and then diff times the derivative of the inner brackets times 2x and now we plug it into the formula for the products rule okay, just substituting in the numbers now the thing is can we tidy it? Well, we can see there's a common factor here first and second term of x squared plus 1 to the minus 1 so you take that out and here we've taken one of those out, so it's got one left, and here you could leave it. But we can show that this is the same expression as if we use the uh, quotient rule. So for this example, some of you might prefer the quotient rule rather than the product rule because you're applying the chain rule on top of the product rule. And the whole point about these rules is trying to make life as simple as possible for us. Okay, so just to say that wherever you can apply the quotient rule, you can apply the product rule. 
depending upon the derivative, it may be easier to apply the product rule in place of the quotient rule. But where if but where it does not simplify matters to apply the product rule, i.e. you're applying more than one rule, in this case the chain rule on top of the product rule, you may just stick to the quotient rule. Okay, I hope you found that helpful.